SebastianTV.com. Right, now to the latest in our Lifesavers series, and this week there's rather a different twist. Yes, Tony Luke from Brighton was diagnosed with terminal cancer, but the power of the mind can be extraordinary, and it was Tony's passion for his work which helped him beat his illness, as Gareth Evans explains. Filmmakers often claim they went to hell and back to get their movies made, and that's certainly true of Tony Luke. He was given just eight months to live while starting to work on Britain's first full-length computer-animated film. Well, the movie got made, Tony has a new lease of life, and one day dreams of turning Brighton into a major centre for animation. Like a phoenix, the producer of Japanese-style comic art has risen from the ashes of despair to shoot down in flames the idea that movies have to cost the earth. Tony Luke's Brighton studio is in his second-floor flat, and he made the feature film right, Dominator for a fraction of the money spent by such big two, boys as Pixar and Disney. Just £20,000. Sam? Hardware and the software uh, is now cheap enough and available enough to... Uh, enable anybody really to do exactly the same thing. The 75 minute film stems from his comic creation, which was a huge hit in Japan. At its height in the 1990s, Dominator had over a million readers. We found we still had the rights to Dominator, so we thought that would be the perfect vehicle for the first movie. The project consumed Tony and his small team. But a short way into making the supernatural tale of rock and roll demons, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I was informed that I only had about another eight months left in which to get this done, because uh, I wasn't going to be around. There was no sense of him wanting sympathy, or, um, or, or he didn't really want to talk about it particularly. He, he was very, very focused um, on his work um, and just showed a sort of incredible uh, momentum, really. Yes, the movie had to go on, and Tony drew incredible strength from his passion to get it completed. It was a godsend. I think if you're in that situation, if you have something to focus on, it, uh, it can really help. Then, out of the blue, St Bartholomew's Hospital contacted Tony and offered him the chance to go through an experimental surgical procedure. He felt he had no choice. The operation was touch and go, and at one stage, Tony's heart stopped. But he pulled through and made a remarkable recovery while continuing to work on the movie. When I had the big operation to remove most of the, most of the contents of my rib cage, uh, about three days later, uh, I had access to a laptop and spent the next three weeks working on the script and the storyboards for the film whilst firing off emails to everyone saying, right, I'm still here, I'm still alive, get ready, we're going to do this. The film, which helped save Tony's life, is set to receive cult status. It got rave reviews at the Cannes and Valencia film festivals and will shortly be released in its spiritual home, Japan. The people up in London and elsewhere ought to watch out um, because this has worked. I think this is, this is going to become something quite big in the very near future. It just shows what a small group of close, talented people can do, even in adversity. When I was first diagnosed, most people I knew socially ran a mile from me. They didn't want to know. I thought, uh, keep away. Um, so I really did find out who my friends were in the process. And your friends were the team that you built around you for this film? Oh, yes. Dominator 2 is already in production. Gareth Evans in Brighton for Meridian tonight. <laughs> How incredibly positive he was, and he might yet make his fortune with that, yeah. I look forward to seeing that. Mm. As you said in the introduction to that report, the power of the mind can be quite extraordinary, <laughs> and as if to totally contradict that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Paul Belveston. Thank you very much. The first round of the FA Cup.